Hi, my name's Dan Hegenstaller. I'm an assistant regional forester with the North Central Region of the Pennsylvania Game Commission. And my job is to work with a team of other uh, natural resource professionals in the agency to manage forest habitat on state game lands for a variety of wildlife species. We're here on game lands to talk about succession in forest ecosystems. Ecosystems are made up of all the living and non-living parts of a place and how they all interact. So it's the trees and plants, deer and birds, but also the soil and the slope and the weather. All of these things and more come together to create the particular forest on a site. But just as important in shaping forests are what we call disturbances. So uh, dis disturbances are any event that alters a species or structure of a forest. In Pennsylvania, disturbances could be anything from a tornado uh, or a windstorm to a fire uh, or a timber harvest. The range of conditions that result from disturbances create the different habitats needed by all of our uh, native wildlife. And the path that a forest takes, how it develops in the years and decades after a disturbance, uh, is what we call forest succession. We're standing here in a young forest just a few years after a timber harvest that removed most of the older trees, opening up light and resources for a new forest to develop. In forestry, we call this stage of forest succession stand initiation. This time, say from age 0 to 10 or 15, is dominated by herbaceous plants like brambles, blackberries in other words, grasses, ferns, but also sprouts from trees and shrubs, so it's got kind of a brushy, low appearance. This habitat, often called early successional or young forest, is critically important for a whole bunch of wildlife in Pennsylvania. Lots of migratory songbirds nest and forage in here. Turkeys and grouse can bug in here, hunt for insects. And the cover from predators is important for them as well. And of course, deer and elk depend on the forage and browse in young forests. We're seeing lots of deer and elk sign uh, in here right now. The challenge with uh, this type of habitat is that it's short-lived, only a decade or so before the tree seedlings and sprouts uh, grow tall enough and thick enough to shade out all that lush, brushy, herbaceous vegetation. Uh, but that's succession. That's, that's what happens. By age 15 or 20, in Pennsylvania at least, most young forests are entering a new phase we call stem exclusion and depends on how fast the trees grow and how thick they are, uh, how quickly the, the forest reaches this stage. But by this time, you can begin to see the new forest forming uh, as the canopy of the small trees close up. And lots of the uh, shorter trees get crowded out and die, uh, thinning them out, thinning and reducing the number of trees. Stands that are in stem exclusion lose a lot of that uh, dense uh, herbaceous vegetation and browse. They lose that you know, berry production from uh, blackberry and brambles and kind of lose that thick brushy habitat of really young stands, but they still provide cover and a kind of protected foraging opportunities for birds. And it's also where you might expect to hear a grouse drumming this stage can last decades, really depending on the tree species and how fast they grow and thin out. But eventually, maybe by age 50 or 60, most of the thinning has occurred and the trees are tall and far enough apart that some light begins to filter down to the forest floor again. Uh, this stage is, is called understory reinitiation because you know, scattered canopy gaps might start to form and some diffuse light allows the development of plants that are shade tolerant and shrubs and tree seedlings uh, in the understory. This forest, which is about 100 years old that we're standing in today, uh, has some canopy gaps that have allowed the growth of shrubs like witch hazel, serviceberry, uh, and some red maple. 
there's some huckleberry in the understory and small patches of grass and forbs as well. And this is the stage that most of our Pennsylvania forests are in if they haven't had uh, a recent harvest or disturbance. Uh, most of them were harvested at the turn of the 20th century, uh, and they're about 100 years old now. So think big trees forming a dominant layer with a lower layer of shrubs, saplings, or other herbaceous plants, not as dense as in a young forest, but uh, starting to get a little bit more understory structure than in a stem exclusion stand. Oak stands like this are really coming into their own uh, when it comes to acorn production. Uh, these forests are providing some browse in that, in, f from those understory shrubs, and they're, they're producing a really important high energy foods like acorns, or in a uh, northern hardwood stand, you're, get, you're getting beech nut and cherry production. These stands also are providing nest sites for canopy nesting birds, and starting to develop some den holes for species like gray squirrel. This stage of forest succession can last decades and really depends on the lifespan of the dominant trees. So in an oak forest that where you know the oaks are healthy and they're not dying from anything in particular, uh, it could last centuries. So over time, uh, as the dominant trees die, either individually from disease uh, or in patches, maybe from a wind throw or something, the forest begins to enter a complex stage, sometimes called old growth, when small and large disturbances like wind or fire kind of whittle away at the really big trees and allow uh, for like small patches of young trees or shrubs to develop. This old growth stage is, is really characterized by kind of scattered, really big old trees with young and middle-aged trees mixed in. There's lots of snags, so dead trees, and down logs, which all that woody debris is, is really important habitat for all kinds of species. The old growth stage is really rare today because it takes so long to develop, and you know most of our forests were cut about 100 years ago. But even the old growth stage can and will eventually end when a big enough disturbance occurs, like a tornado or a severe fire that kind of pushes the reset button. And then the process begins all again with another brushy young forest. Thanks for being with us today to learn about the various stages of forest succession.